Welcome to today's tutorial from the Twin Safety Department. Today we have a very exciting topic. I will show you today how you can realize an SS1 functionality with an envelope monitoring. My name is Martin Frucht from the Product Management Safety. As usual, we start with some basic information and a description of our demo system. Then I will give you a few words about our approach, how to realize the functionality. We will have, as usual, a live demonstration. Afterwards, I show you one slide about the parameterization of our functionality. And we conclude our tutorial with a short outlook to the following tutorials and a and Q&A about our today's topic. The goal of our today's tutorial is the realization of an SS1 functionality with a monitored ramp. So at runtime, we want to trigger SS1 and the down ramp uh, of the drive is monitored until it's finished within the STO state. As prerequisites, uh, you need a Twinker 3 version greater or equal to 4024.11 you need a TE9000 version greater or equal to 1211. You need a TwinSafe firmware greater or equal to 03. And last but not least, you need an AX8000 firmware greater or equal to 0104 with the default module ID active. The start of our tutorial today is a complete TwinCat 3 solution with a standard PLC, an EL6910 project, and an existing AX8000 project. Today, we took uh, the AX8000 SLP project from one of our last tutorials as starting point. The hardware of our demo system exists of an CX for the Ethercat communication and the standard PLC tasks. We have an EL6910 as master twin safe logic. We have an EL1918 for the safe inputs of the light barrier. We have a light barrier and we have an AX8000 in the safe motion version. The required safety functionality for today is we want to trigger SS1 via the EL6910 on the AX8000. And then the AX8000 monitors the ramp and the violation of the ramp results in STO. Before we start with our live demonstration, a few words to the approach today. As mentioned in the last tutorials, a twin safe motion wizard creates a safety project for the AX8000 or for several AX8000. And each safety function, like SLP, for example, is realized within a single twin safe group. And the standard safety project for the AX8000 is already generating a twin safe group for the error handling. Within the error handling, as you see in the in the right corner, we have two monitor function blocks who are realizing the standard SS1 functionality. And this is exactly the point where we want to integrate our SS1 with envelope monitoring. Basically, we break up the original SS1 connection between the two safe monitor function blocks and we integrate our envelope monitoring. So we use the function block envelope to create our ramp monitoring. The function block has four parameters shown in the left picture. And I also included the function block diagram in the right hand corner. The envelope function block creates an envelope from the amount of in value. So you have an in value. As long as the in value stays within the envelope, the function block output is true. If it violates the envelope, the output goes to false. Then there's a maximum allowed time uh, to get down to the target value. If you violate that maximum time, the output goes to false. As soon as the in value is within our target region, uh, you have a configured amount of time, the time after in target. And after that time, when the in value stays within the target range, the output of the function block goes to false. And of course, we want to use it for the speed monitoring. So we have to adapt uh, the velocity and the ramp 
to match our current application. Then we can already start with our live demonstration. We have our Twinker 3 solution with an AX8000 safety project generated by the TwinSafe Motion Wizard. Then we can open the channel A error handling and we can find the two safe monitor function blocks mentioned before. And that's basically where we integrate our envelope functionality. So we need a scaling function block in order to scale our speed signal. And we need the already mentioned envelope function block to create the envelope. Of course, to um, support the readability, we rename our function blocks. The first one is SS1 scale channel A, and the second one is SS1 envelope for channel A. And we do the corresponding links. The SS1 connection in the original functionality is broken up. We connect it to the envelope function block. The scaling output is going to the envelope function block input, and the output of the envelope is going to the original SS1 functionality. For the input of the scaling function block, we create a new variable for the primary feedback velocity signal. And we have to adjust the data types. The velocity input signal is a 32-bit signed integer. The output of the scaling function block uh, is a 16-bit integer. And the input of the envelope is also a 16-bit integer. If we save now, we see that we are missing a connection of the variable. So we go to our variable mapping to the corresponding variable name. And we connect it to our local process image. So alias devices, target system, we choose the primary feedback velocity average signal for the functionality. After doing all the connections, it's already time for the parameters. So we still need to parameterize our envelope function block. We choose a target value of 5 and an offset of 20. Within the target range, we want to switch off after 200 milliseconds and we allow a maximum time of 1500 millimeters. For the parameters of the scaling function blocks, we have to consider a few facts. On the first hand, we use our velocity signal from the local target system, and that velocity is given as 32-bit integer in increments per milliseconds. But as an output of the scaling function block in our tutorial here, we want an information degrees per second. So we have to calculate our scaling factors according to that desired unit. In our case, we want an output value of 3600 degrees per second. So we get a scaling factor of 1 uh, divided by 1,193. And then we have to take those scaling factor values and we have to check our envelope functionality. Within the envelope functionality, we want to calculate the decrement of the in value. So we take the in value latch, in our case 3,600, minus the target value five and divided by the maximum time to get the decrement for the in value. And if that decrement value is smaller than one, the decrement is taken as one. 
So if you realize an application with an envelope monitoring, you do that calculation. And if the decrement value is smaller than one, then that means that another or respectively the wrong ramp is monitored. So you have to, for example, scale up the value within the scaling function block to get a decrement greater or equal to one. In our case, that's why we took the scaling function block to get an output value of 3600, because with that value, we get a decrement value shown here in the comment of two. So that means the correct ramp is monitored and we can use it for our application here. So now that we have that information, we take over the scaling factor 1193. And basically that's all we have to do for the parameterization. Basically, that was all from the implementation and parameterization point of view. Only two little things left to do. First, we are connected to the delayed output of the save mon function block. And we want a lower delay, so we change it to 100 milliseconds. Of course, we could also use the other output if we don't want a delay. Second point, we introduce the new function blocks to the existing TwinSafe group. So of course the new function blocks have uh, the upper two execution of order numbers six and seven, but we want it to be executed like the original order. So we go over the context menu, change execution order of function blocks, and we move up the new two function blocks so that there's the original SS1 functionality, then our scaling and envelope function blocks, and then the original SDU uh, channel A functionality. So now we are really done with the implementation of the safety function. So now we can start our download. We go to the multi download and choose our safe motion application. We enter our username and password. And then we can start our safety application. So our system is already running. Now we can go to the online view within the safety application. And we give an error acknowledgement so we can see if all the signals are coming. So everything is up and running and all signals are green. So we can start to run the motor. So we go to the drive manager for channel A. We go to run motor. We enable our controller and acknowledge the existing error on the axis. And we par parameterize our reverse sequence. We want to go with a 60 millimeter per second and a target position of 600 millimeters. We take a quick look at, at the scope. The signals are changing. And then we can go back to our safety application. We also enable our online values. And now we want to check if the function is working like we expect. So we zoom out a little and give a SS1 command. And then we see the original SS1 signal is going and the envelope monitoring is working so that after the monitoring time, 
the output goes to false and the safety function is working as we expect. That was the very quick realization of an SS1 functionality with envelope monitoring. For the parameterization part, a short summary. The velocity is always mapped to 32-bit. So even the encoder is only giving us 24 bits, for example. The value is shifted left, though the lesser bits are zero and the upper bits are always matching the information. In our case, a 32-bit integer value. If you calculate the scaling factors for the envelope function block, you always have to check the decrement for the in value for the envelope function block. If that decrement is less than one, the inclination is too flat. So you have no working monitoring for your application, respectively the wrong or another ramp is monitored. And as a countermeasure shown in our tutorial today, for example, you can scale up the value so that the decrement value is greater or equal to one. Like we have shown in our example here, we wanted to scale to 360 degrees per second, but the decrement resulted in a value less than one. So now we scale up to 3600 degrees per second, which is resulting in a decrement value of two. So that is resulting in the correct RAM function and we can use it for our application shown today. That was all for today's tutorial. I hope I could give you a brief overview of our SS1 functionality with envelope monitoring. Next week, uh, I will show you how you can use the backup and restore mechanisms with an AX8000 and the TwinSafe Motion Wizard. And after that, I will show you how you can create a TwinSafe Motion Wizard project with additional local safety functionality. Or if another topic comes up, we will shift that back a little because it was already basically part of one of the last tutorials. Thanks a lot for your attention. I hope I will see you again next week to the next tutorial.